Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Introduction to Industrial Processes. My name is Alba Diaz Rodriguez, I work at TSK since 2014. I'm a scientific leader in Chemical Development Department and my uh, uh, SimBio SME focus on the implementation of biocatalysis in manufacturing. In this slide you can see the roadmap to new drugs. So at the top, you can see the different development stages uh, to take a new drug to the market. And at the bottom, you can see the timelines. Um, so this is a very uh, tedious and long journey, and there are a lot of um, people that are involved in this journey. One of the key uh, members or the key roles are the pharma chemists. There are two types of pharma chemists. The first one is the medicinal chemist, who is responsible for finding the best drug molecule from a pool or library of, of molecules. The drug must reach the target, but also the drug um, needs to interact with the target with minimal side effects. We have a second type of chemist, who is the process chemist, who is responsible for finding the best way to um, make the drug on scale and that is via brainstorming exercises but also route scouting and this is a process that is a lot about safety safety of the chemical process but also safety for the patient and safety for the environment so what does a process chemist do so we basically develop an, um, the best process um, recipe through a very detailed study so we have to prepare the drug substance um, to support all the clinical and safety studies. For that, we need to discover new chemistry and new routes of synthesis. We also need to optimize and understand the process, the chemical processes really well, and ensure that the quality of these drug substances and intermediates is very high through very uh, tedious analytical development work. Also, we have to develop new technologies, and this is to make our processes more efficient and also transfer all these processes to full-scale manufacturing. And finally, we are responsible for preparing regulatory documentation to support file and launching of these new medicines. So here are the considerations to take into account when we develop a chemical process an industrial process. So here you can see the different stages of development uh, from um, lead to candidate till the launching of the new medicine. At the beginning of the development work, we have a process or a route that is fit for purpose. At the end of this journey, we have a process that is ready for manufacturing. And it's in the middle when we make uh, all the drug substance development work. And this work can be divided in different stages. We have an early phase stage where we need to make sure that the process is safe. A mid-phase um, development work where we need to make this process operable and robust. And then a late phase where we make this process efficient and ready for manufacture. And the input of engineering increases during this um, development work. There are different factors that we need to think about before we take a process to manufacturing, and that uh, uses the SELECT principles. SELECT is an acronym for safety. So the process needs to be safe. We need to use uh, substances that are safe to use um, for our health. But also for the environment, we need to make sure that we minimize the amount of waste that we're using. Also legal, so we need to have freedom to operate and follow all the regulations. Economical, so we need to minimize the cost of goods for that process. And controls, we need to follow a, a lot of controls so that we meet the specifications for that drug. And we also follow GMP practice. And finally, through pulp, we need to make sure that we minimize the time that that process is in the pilot. 
Now, if we want to develop an enzymatic process, we follow this uh, workflow, which is very similar to what I showed you before. First, we start with a screening. We typically use an IT6 well plate um, where we have different variants of the enzyme and we screen this panel against um, the reaction of interest. Uh, once that we identify the best enzymes or the base variants, normally we need to um, um, start an evolution pro uh, project and that is to basically maximize the efficiency of that process. After that, we need to optimize the process and make sure that we control all the parameters for that reaction, and that includes the enzyme supply and fermentation. Once that we are happy with all the factors and parameters, then we take that process to manufacturing. Here is an example that we developed at GSK a few years back for the synthesis of this LSD1 inhibitor. The key reaction for this um, API was a reductive amination uh, between the aldehyde 2 and the amine 4 to make this amine 5. The key or the main problems for this original route is that we were using stoichiometric amounts of sodium borohydride, but also that um, the amine needed to be resolved before the reaction take place. Also, the alcohol oxidation and the reaction one uh, to make two, the aldehyde two, require cryogenic um, conditions. And basically, the cycle time um, from alcohol one till five um, was approximately twenty days. So it was there was um, there was a space and room for for improvement. So we wanted to try our immune reductases and follow the workflow that I showed you before. So we first started with the first stage screening. And this is the reaction that we tried. So this is a reductive amination again between the aldehyde 2 and the amine 4 using um, immune reductases in phosphate buffer, using the MSO as cosolvent and NADPH as cofactor and glucose, glucose dehydrogenase as recycling system. So we first screen our in-house IREC panel um, against the enantiomerically pure um, amine uh, 4. And we were really happy to see conversions higher than 95% after uh, 17 hours. After that, we screened the same reaction, but this time against the racemic amine, and we were really happy to see uh, very high conversions after 17 hours and very high selectivities, um, suggesting that the enzyme was discriminating between the two enantiomers. But then we took that wild type enzyme D10, um, and we escaped that reaction to 5 grams. And although the selectivities were retained and were really high, the yields, the isolated yields, were very moderate. And that was in part due to the high loading of enzyme that we were using. Therefore, we needed to evolve that enzyme to make it more effective and to make the process uh, uh, better. So the main objective of this evolution project was to decrease the biocatalyst loading, but also increase the substrate loading and um, maximizing the yields. And you see that after three rounds of evolution, we were able to decrease the loading of the enzymes from, from 450% to less than 1%. Um, Increase the aldehyde loading to 25 grams per liter, uh, increasing the yields and keeping the yields very high. We were also able to decrease the optimum pH for this reaction, um, and that was to do with the stability of the intermediate 5. This compound was not very stable at neutral pHs. So after we completed the evolution of the enzyme, we needed to optimize the process um, 
Although it is true that you are able to optimize some of the parameters through the evolution of the enzyme, it is very convenient to run a design of experiments, a DOE, and that saves time but also helps to understand the different parameters of the reaction. So you make sure that you work in a space where your process is very robust. So once that you complete your DOE, that um, reaction would be ready for manufacturing. Again, once that the enzyme route is indoors, um, we enter a process that is called process design, um, and that is to do with optimizing the process. And it has um, two main drivers. The first one is to reduce the mass and the energy that is used for that reaction. And the second one is to reduce the amount of materials um, um, that you're using and the waste that you are generating. In that process design um, stage, you also need to optimize the reaction work. You need to optimize the separation, the purification, and also the isolations of the intermediates and products if you need to crystallize them. In general, the downstream processing or the best process is the one that is the simplest. That means the one that, is, that has less unit operation. So typically, an enzymatic reaction will be run in an organic or an aqueous reaction mixture. Ideally, you would like your product to be um, insoluble and be able to filtrate it. If that's not the case, you can extract it and then try to precipitate it and crystallize it. And that will be the optimum um, process. Once that you're happy with your workup and all the parameters for your reaction, you are ready for a scale-up demonstration. We run these uh, scale-up um, runs in our scale-up laboratories, and we run three batches of half a gram each. In this case, you are the amine in your buffer and all the components for the IRED and recycling system. Um, after that, you add the aldehyde in DMSO. After five hours, the reaction is completed, and then you can uh, filter the enzyme. After that, we add uh, sodium chloride and the API intermediate precipitates, and then you can filter your, your product. This product is isolated with very high um, yields and very high um, uh, purities by HPLC. So this is the process that we will follow before we take a process, an industrial process, to our manufacturing sites. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.